Hello there, my beautiful book lovers. My name is Kimia, and welcome to my book knock. So today we're doing another video for the Books from Around the World series, and the focus for today is actually historical fiction. So I'm one of those type of people that I love history, but I much prefer to learn about history through historical fiction than history books, simply because like when I'm sort of concentrated on the specific characters, I tend to remember details and like information much better and easier. So that's one of the reasons that I love historical fiction. And I thought, why not do a, like a series about like historical fiction books from around the world? So if that's something that you're interested in and you like, let's get into it, shall we? First, we're going to start with Congo. And the book that I have picked for this country is the Poisonwood Bible by Isabella Kingslover. This book is focusing on the Price family and um, they're moving from Georgia to Congo because the father, Nathan, he's a priest and he's going on this mission to spread Christianity in Congo. And he's going with his wife, Orlina, and their four daughters. And by the time that they move there, um, Nathan is a very strict and sort of a close-minded type of a person that does not understand anything of the new culture that he's surrounded. And because of that, he creates a lot of conflict for himself and also his family. The book mostly focus on Orlina and also their four daughters, and uh, it's trying to showcase those differences through the lens of these five women. And um, it's a very interesting book because it really shows that how, while people had this sort of um, mission to go and spread their religious, their culture, and whatever to the African countries, because of those differences, it could create a lot of issues. And um, through this book, we're following these this family, and again, these women. And at the beginning, um, you know, like th there are like good daughters and a good wife, and they're going with this like husband, father, and, and they're really believing in him and what he's standing for. But by the time that they start to sort of settle down, and see those differences and those conflicts that it's created because of their father and the husband, they start to question their own sort of role in this mission. And we are following the story again through all of these different characters. So we're seeing different side of the same story in a sense. It's a very it's a beautiful but also a hard book and a story. Um, we're really seeing how they start to struggle simply because Nathan is such a close-minded person and he's really just not trying to budge in any way and it's creating all of these issues for the family and by the time that something happens um, the mother it's sort of like you know what this is not gonna work and so she um, takes a, a, the, the, the daughter the kids and she's sort of like leaving and uh, this sort of um, uh, like the impact that this whole mission had on all of them follows them throughout their lives and we're seeing it how it affects each daughter in a different way because again they're also different people so they see that father's mission in a different way and it's it's a wonderful book it's really a book to really show those differences but also the similarities and how it is important to know and recognize those cultural differences religious belief and um, it's a book that really it's about love forgiveness redemption and also at the same time about the hardship and to really see that sometimes even though we might believe in something at the beginning we should not really always just stick with it just because and how much it could affect us if we stay with it for that so anyway it's a wonderful book I highly recommend it if you would like because again this is a book that it's happening during the time that Congo is also fighting for its freedom from Belgium and so there's a lot of conflicts going on at the same time and so it was very fascinating for me to learn about that history especially because like if you think about it 1959 is not that long ago and so it was very fascinating to see that how not so long ago so many different issues were happening around the world and so if you're interested in this subject I highly recommend this book 
Next, we have Chile. And the book that I have picked for this country is The House of His Spirit by Isabella Allende. Please forgive me for pronunciations. Um, so this book not only is a historical fiction book, but it also have the elements of magical realism, which is my favorite. And that's something that like in a lot of books from uh, South America and Latin countries, you see that there. And that's the reason I, I love it. It's a wonderful book. This book, it's um, actually happening in, in a sort of an unnamed um, Latin country. Um, but in, in, in real life, it's sort of following the events that was happening in Chile um, during their socialism, the fall of socialism movement and everything that was going on with the dictatorship and everything that is related to that. But the main story that we're following, it's the Toredo family that we're following them for through different generations. So first we have Clara. She is this young girl that has the ability to sort of communicate with the dead, with the spirit. And she's seeing them and she's getting sort of like guidance from them and like she's very involved with them it's like part of her life and then she falls in love with this man um, called Esteban and he's a very wealthy man he's a landowner but he's a very again um, strict sword of a guy that it's like really you know all for the like the rich and it's not going for the like the socialism and everything he's like trying to make money as much as he can um, in the easiest way that he can you know and so they fall in love and then we're following them and their um, descendants and then by the time the daughter Blanca um, she falls in love with Pedro who is a, like a socialist uh, sort of a, like a worker class uh, type of a person and obviously the father is like absolutely not happy for it and there's a lot of conflicts because again like Pedro stands for and it's like he's a fighter for the socialism and like the you know the independence of the country and everything that is happening on the movement and so the father is absolutely Esteban is like against it and doesn't want it and anything to do with it and so um, we have that conflict and then um, later on by the time that the granddaughter Alba uh, she is older and she is going through her realization of how the country is sort of like falling because of again the coup and everything that's going on uh, to sort of get rid of the socialism um, and then the Esteban and like Clara which uh, they are like you know it's a, like a generation of history so like they're still involved in this part of the story and we are seeing how all of these people change their mind, how they stick with what they believed, how they sort of learn along the way. And so it's a story that like really, again, while it still has that elements of magic realism, it comes from actual events throughout the history in Chile. And so it was very eye-opening in a sense that you get all those sense of uh, magic realism, which is wonderful because if you have this spirit that are really guiding Clara and her family and her descendant um, into this upheaval that is happening around them. But at the same time, we have Esteban that is like really representing the old and the like the like, you know, the traditions and the like the older sort of beliefs and how it has a hard time to change and adapt and how we have Blanca and Alba that represent a new, the new movement, the like the new beliefs and traditions. And so we're seeing the clash of these two and the, the like the bigger picture it's really about family country uh, the the love that like people have for both the family and their country and um it's a wonderful book it's one of those that again it's wrap you in from the page one and you're sort of going along this journey with this family to real to really seeing how all of these events can affect not just the country but every single individual in that country so if you're interested or if you know anything about uh chilean history or you just want to learn more about it it's a wonderful book i highly recommend it it's also a very good book to um sort of get into the latin american literature because like again that magic realism it's such a, like a big movement in that um whole region's literature and so if you have not tried it before or if you have done a little 
of it, but it's still like sort of on the fence. I highly recommend this book to sort of give it a different chance or if to fall in love with it even more as I did. So that's a great book for it. Moving on, we have Canada. And I promise you, I did not pick every single country to start with a C. It just happened. Um, but we have Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood, which is one of my all time favorite author. Um, so this book, it's, it's fantastic. And if you have not read any of her books, this is a, like a great one to sort of start with, I guess, because like, honestly, all of her works are just the great, like I cannot pick really any of them, but this one is like one of my favorites. And if you have not seen the show on Netflix, I highly recommend it. It's a fantastic show. Um, so this book, it's based on the true events that happened to Grace Mark. Um, she was an Irish woman a servant that came to Canada to start a, like a new life, a better life um, in the 19th century. And after a while, she's being accused of killing her, like the master, the person that she was working and the, like the house head. Um, and so we are trying to realize that like if it is true or not through the lens of uh, Dr. Uh, Simon, he is a psychiatrist that is very interested in this case and really wants to like study uh, Grace to sort of see what is the story behind this. And so the story is really following Grace um, and also um, uh, Jason, uh, Jason Mark, the doctor, um, to really figure out if this really was done by Grace or not. But we're also going through the events that was happening at the time to especially women who were like servants and um, uh, like very like focusing on the like the Irish families that again, they came to Canada trying to find a better lives. And because of a lot of them were poor, um, many of them, especially again, the women were going to become like servants and maids in different households and how because of the patriarchy and the, like, the, the way that the society was at the time, how they have been abused in different ways um, and how they didn't have a really a sort of, there was no sort of a justice system to back them up or protect them against all of these like rich people. Um, and so anyway, while we're sort of listening to Grace, we start to wonder that if she is telling the truth or not, because again, we are hearing this story through Jason telling the story from Grace. So like, you know, it's not the first hand experiencing it with Grace while everything is happening, but it's instead it's the story that we're being told. And so we're trying to figure out what is the truth and what is a lie. And we cannot really trust everything that we're hearing and seeing. And because of that, it's a fascinating book. And I love the ending because it's sort of, in a way, I'm not spoiling anything, but it's in a way that it's, mostly up to you to make up your mind that what you think was the like the actual crime or how it happens and everything and the show did it such like such a great job and it did the book justice honestly at least in my opinion it really showed everything in a way that I wanted to see it and so this book again um it's one of those that it's focusing it's about Canada and everything that's happening during that time but it's also again because of the focus on the Irish community it has that extra element to it so if you're interested in any of those things or if you're looking for a fantastic mystery book. This is a, just a top notch for that and I highly recommend it to give it a go. Then we're moving to New Zealand and the book that I have picked it's The Lumineers by Eleanor Catton. This book it is fantastic. I mean I feel like I'm saying that about all of these books but it's honestly because they truly are. Um, this book it's about Walter Moody. He's a person that it's going to New Zealand during the gold rush in 1860s, I want to say. And so, you know, like any other person during that time, he's like a man with a lot of dreams of becoming rich and finding the like the gold mines and everything. So he's going to New Zealand. And by the time that he gets to New Zealand in this little small town, he comes across this group of people. There's 12 men that they're having this sort of a secret, not so secret of a meeting because there has been a murder 
um, a person is missing and a lot of gold has been found somewhere like with someone that shouldn't have been and so everybody is just like losing their mind they don't know what is happening what is going on and everybody's sort of like trying to be like you know I'm innocent I didn't do anything I didn't know about it who's to be fault um, and all of those things and um, because Walter was in that sort of a like a little pub in that moment he sort of gets pulled into this story and he is uh, hearing everybody's sort of um, part in this like bigger picture to sort of hearing everything from everybody but like once again, when you're hearing one story from like 12 different peoples, there's going to be like, you know, lies. Everybody's trying to make themselves look better. Everybody's trying to be like, I was not involved. I didn't know and everything uh, like along those lines. And so uh, we are again, finding out all of these little pieces of the main story. And we're trying to with Walter, put it together to realize what is the truth, what really happened, where is the person that is missing, who killed the other person, why the golds were there. And it's one of those mysteries that you enjoy it while it's going on, no matter how long that book is. Because that book, which I, I thought I have it around, I don't, uh, but it's a very, very large book. It's like a thousand something pages, but it's so just good. So it, it's fantastic that like, I honestly couldn't put it down and I wanted to get to know all of these characters more and more. And that's the reason that I really enjoyed the book because since we have a lot of characters, you might think that like some of them might be diluted or like, you know, like not be as interesting and be 2D, but it's actually not the case. Every time that you get to know a different character and learn about their story or how they're involved with the main stories, you'll learn so much about them that you really see them as a sort of a, like a main side character. And um, Walter, it's a, a very good narrator. I think he is the best character to be the main sort of like, not exactly a detective, but the person to tell us the story and try to solve the issue and the mystery with him. And so because of that, I enjoyed this book very, very much. It's um, a book that, again, it has mystery. It has some sort of like, um, I don't want to say fantasy per se, but it has some elements of magic and astrology with it that makes it even more interesting. And again, it goes hand with hand with the House of Spirit book that again, like it had that one, well, it has like magic realism, which is a little bit different. But again, this book also has those elements of magic, but it doesn't take anything away from the like the historical fiction aspect of the book, if anything adds to it, because it really shows that how when all of these people from all around the world um they're coming to this new land to try to find the wealth that they're looking for to make a name for themselves and how the like the mixture of all of these different cultures and beliefs can really like create a bigger elements in this story so it's a fantastic book i will say that because of the size of the book it's one of those that you should read it by the time that like you're not in a rush but it's one of those books that like, you know, not only you're going to learn about the gold rush movement and everything in New Zealand, but also you're solving a murder mystery and like also like other sort of mystery that comes along the story. So it's super fun. And if you're interested in that, and if you really want to feel accomplished, because like, I think we all do when we finish in like a very, very big book, we all feel so accomplished because like, we're like, look at the size of this book, I finished it. So if you're looking for that sort of sense of satisfaction, you should give this book a go. Last but not least, we have Korea slash Japan. And the book that I have picked for these two countries, it's one of the best books that I have ever read in my entire life. And that is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This book, it's it's phenomenal. It's like, honestly, it's one of those books that like, you see everybody telling everybody else that like, you should read this book. And then you're like, Oh, I will read it eventually. But then you read it and you're like, why I didn't read this sooner. It's like, it's fantastic. So um, this book, it's another book that we are following a family and all of their descendants. Well, not all but like some of their descendants. And the main story starts with Sunja. And it's happening in early 1900s. 
and um sunja it's a korean woman she's living in korea and she is a daughter of a sort of a poor fisherman and um eventually one day she is pregnant by a wealthy married man and because of the time the culture everything and stuff um everybody's blaming her she's outcast of course and so um because like the family doesn't know really what to do and like they sort of want to save her she marries a very nice but sickly priest and um they decide to move to japan and so um by the time that they go to japan because of again the time frame and the period um, there is a lot of hostility between the Japanese and Korean. They don't really like um, the Korean and in general foreigner to be like, you know, in their countries. And because of that, Sunji and her family, they really suffer. They're really trying to um, prove themselves, make a new life for themselves. But they're struggling because of all those prejudice that it's there. And so we are following this family, their son, their grandsons, and we're really seeing that how difficult it can be to move to a new country that has so much prejudice against you and how much they're just fighting you for whatever reason and um, how much politics and um, the, the society itself and large can affect again individuals and families and it's never ever really truly only about the like the bigger society but it's always coming down to the individuals and we're seeing how each person in this family trying to make their own way in a different way in a different approach to this sort of prejudice against them and this racism against them and they're trying to make their way by um sort of blending in by stepping away and staying in the like the, the sort of the korean society that it's in japan and so we are just following them through this journey and it's one of those books that really makes you appreciate the life that you have the family the love that you have for your family members and how at the end of the day the support it's important and it's really like it can affect your life and you can also see that how each person and individual could be resilient when it comes to facing these difficulties and how because of that individuality we sort of go through life in different directions and different approaches simply because um, what we think it's best for us could not be the best for the other person so anyway this is one of those books that really makes you think makes you to question even your own prejudice you know because like sometimes it's one of those things that like we don't realize that we have and it's some stuff that like you know it's like stuck into our heads from like a young age sometimes we don't really realize that sometimes we do realize it and it's important to sort of recognize them and it's also very important to see our privileges that like you know when you're born and raised and living in the country that you're from how much life can be easier compared to when you're like moving to a different country and the struggles that like you know the immigrants going through because of again the hardship that it is um and, and again it's a fantastic book i highly recommend reading it to all like everybody honestly anybody and everybody because it's a story that um really warms up your heart while it's shattering it while it's still mending it it's like one of those books and it's like one of those experiences and so if you like any of those stories, because again, I love books and the stories that are about families. I think I have mentioned that in like every other videos of mine, because those are like, you know, the most fascinating stories because like all of us have families and we have different sort of relationship with them. And so, and again, like families, it's not always about even like blood. It can be like families that we have formed, like the people that we call family in any way, in any sense. And so because of that, the stories that are about those relationship and those conflicts, the loves, the resilience, um, it's so important. And so this book, it's 
it has it all. And if you like it, if you are also interested in any of those stories, honestly, all of these books that I mentioned, they have those elements in a sense. Maybe Lumineers doesn't have it as much, but they also have the different sense of family. So maybe that one also has it. But the rest, because when it comes to historical events, it always comes down to the family, to like how each like the family units, whatever shape that they are, they're trying to make their way through those historical events that it's happening. So anyway, um, they're all great books. I highly recommend them. I would love to know which of these books you have read, which one of them you want to read, um, if there's any other books that you will suggest to any of us to read to learn about a different sort of historical events. I would love to hear about them. Until the next video, happy reading!